In this section, we'll be looking at intermediate move operations. So we'll start by opening the move folder and opening move.sc doc. I'll be focusing on a few things like moving components, moving along trajectories, and making patterns of components. The first thing I'd like to point out is our structure tree. Notice we have one bracket, which is the blue solid. Notice we also have two components, sliders. So there's one green solid in each one. And this is a copy of the component. So you'll notice if I click pull, and I choose one of the faces on the green solid and pull, both change at the same time. Now this is a very important point, because let's say we want to move one of these solids. I'm going to triple click to select that green solid. You'll notice that I have one body selected. If I move this solid, just like pull, both solids move because I'm editing the solid body. Anytime you edit the solid body, it will edit both models at the same time. This means that if you'd like to move this solid, what you actually want to do is move that component. If I select the component in the structure tree, then I could move that anywhere I'd like on screen. I can translate it or rotate it, and it has no effect on the other component. So it's very important to move components if you'd like to position them inside of your assembly. Now to make it easier to move components, we have a tool guide that allows you to select components. If I choose this tool guide, if I click on a face, notice it up selects to that component. So it's really easy for me to select that component and then move it. I'm going to escape to cancel that. Built into that tool guide is the ability to box select both faces and components at the same time. If I draw a box by dragging the left mouse button, bodies that are entirely enclosed in my box, like the green solid, the component will be selected. If there's only faces, like on this blue object, then just the faces will be chosen. This makes sure I can have faces and components at the same time. Now I could drag on the red arrow to make this longer. I'll type in 20. Or I could drag my move tool onto this round and change the angle. So you can make a lot of changes by being able to drag and rotate components and faces at the same time. Now let's look at moving along an edge. Let's say we want to move this component and we want to move it along these edges to a new location. Notice we only have six directions to move something. Our three translation arrows and our three rotation arrows. To move this along a trajectory, we'll need to choose our trajectory tool guide. Notice the shortcut is to Alt-click. I'm going to pick the tool guide and simply double-click an edge. Now you'll notice we have our edge, which we're sweeping the movement around. I can click and drag, and drag this to a new location. You notice it sweeps along that edge. Remember to copy solids, hold down the control key. If I hold down the control key, I can copy it along that edge. I'm going to hold Control Z to undo, and I'll show you one option which you might use with this is maintain orientation in the middle left of the screen. If you choose maintain orientation, notice as you drag, it stays in that same orientation. So you can keep that in the same orientation or have it wrap around as you hold down the control key and make a copy. So take a few moments to look at moving components and also moving along a trajectory.
So before we get into patterning components, let's look at moving edges. We've seen moving faces, so you can click a face and you can move it to a new location. But you can also select on edges to change the location. If you move an edge, that edge will move to a new location. Most of the time, I'll move edges which exist on cylindrical faces because that will enable me to change the location because if I move this top face, the entire face moves. However, if I select on these edges and move them, I can change their position and the top face updates to a cone. So it lets you perform a different operation by being able to move edges. Now let's go into moving components. I want to pattern this component up and make four of them. The first thing I'll do is move these faces in the blue solid up. Let's move them up 200. Now patterning components is just like patterning a hole. I would select the component by using the Select Component Tool Guide, and I would click the Create Pattern button. Now when I drag it in the red arrow, notice it makes a copy of it. And just like patterning holes, we have a count and a total distance. I usually change the total distance first. I'll make that 200 and change our count to how many we need. Let's say four. Notice we have distance between, total distance, and the count. The biggest difference with patterning components is that we have a pattern component created. Inside of that are the four sliders. If I make a change to one of the bodies, all of them change at the same time. The difference is, is that I can select on one of the components and still change the pattern. We could lock our total distance and change the count to six. Now so there's now six sliders inside of the pattern component. To break this pattern relationship, you can simply select on all those components and drag them out of the pattern component. Now there's no pattern relationship between these components. However, if you select on one to modify it, all of them will still modify at the same time because they're all instances. So take some time to use Move and our Component Tool Guide, Move Along Trajectory, Move a few edges, and try patterning components.